The driving force for the winds is the pressure gradient force. When pressure is different from one location to another, a difference in pressure exists. When the pressure difference exists, a pressure gradient exists. The pressure gradient is used to indicate by the proximity of isobars, those lines of constant pressure normally you see in the weather maps. Where several lines are tightly packed on the map, a large pressure gradient exists. Where the lines are spread apart, less of gradient exists. In the basic sense, more air existing in one place than in another. The atmosphere is always trying to even out in balances. An imbalance in pressure causes winds to blow as the atmospheres attempt to even out the pressure difference. This is most commonly experienced when a strong area of low pressure passes over an area. The pressure difference between the low and adjacent high pressures produces strong winds. Pressure difference usually occurs as a result of heating difference. Large-scale heating difference between the equator and poles produce the general circulation of the atmosphere. The most heated is contained near the equator, where most of the heating occurs. Raising air motions in a general rule here is responsive to the excess heat. At the poles, colder temperatures causing sinking motion. This difference in heat drives the general circulation and we will discuss, discuss that later on in this chapter. So, Coriolis force. Put simply, the Coriolis effect makes things like planes or currents of air traveling long distance around the Earth appears to move a curve as opposite to straight force. It's a powerful force. It affects weather patterns, it affects ocean currents and even affects air travel. As important as the Coriolis effect is, many have not heard about that, or even fewer understand it. In simple terms, the Coriolis effect makes things like planes or currents of air, traveling long distances of air, appear to move in a curve as opposite to a straight line. It's a pretty weird phenomenon, but the cause is simple. Different parts of the Earth move at a different speed. Think about this. It takes the Earth 24 hours to rotate one time. If you stand a foot to the right of the north of the south pole, that means it would take 24 hours to move in a circle that is about 6 feet in circumference. That's about 0.0005 miles per hour. Up and down in the equator, throttle things are different. It still takes the Earth to do the same 24 hours to make a rotation, but this time we are traveling the entire circumference of the planet, which is about 25,000 miles long. That means you are traveling almost 1,040 miles per hour just by standing there. So even though we are all on the Earth, how far we are from the equator determines our forward speed. The farther we are from the equator, the slower we move. Good question. Now think about this. You are in a train traveling at top speed and you are passing a train that is moving a bit slower. You see, for some re mysterious reason, there is a soccer goal on this slower train. Always prepare, you happen to have a soccer ball handy and want to make an impressive trick shot. You take an incredible shot directly at the goal when you are even with the slower train. Even though your aim is dead on, the ball travels at the side and misses the net. That's because the ball is traveling not only in the direction of the goal, but is also going to the direction and speed of your train. One of the most important things the Coriolis effect acts on are storm systems. Big storms like hurricanes, typhoons, also tropical cyclones are low-pressure systems. That means that they suck air in their center. 
But hours just learned air traveling long distance across the Earth does not simply move in a straight line. Just like our soccer ball, the air being sucked in the storm deflects. This deflection is what causes tropical cyclones to spin. The surface of the Earth exerts a frictional drag on the air blowing just above it. This friction can act to change the wind's direct direction and slow it down, keeping it from blowing as fast as the wind allows. Actually, the difference in terrain conditions directly affects how much friction is exerted. For example, a calm ocean surface is pretty smooth, so the wind blowing over it does not move up, down and around any features. By contrast, hills and forests force the wind to slow down and or change directions much more. 